Come thou long expected Jesus Born to set thy people free From our fears and sins release us Let us find our rest in thee Is our strength and consolation Hope of all the earth thou art Dear desire of every nation Joy of every longing heart
While Christmas is indeed about hope, there is more to Christmas than just hope, you see. Oh yes, much more. And so today, we depart from Isaiah, and specifically today, we are going to be in the book of Titus. Titus chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, hear now the word of the Lord. It says, remind them to submit to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to slander no one, to avoid fighting and to be kind, always showing gentleness to all people. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to His mercy. Through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, He poured out His Spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that Having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, we've read our passage. Back to this question, what is Christmas really all about? You may be wondering, what does this have to do with Titus 3? It doesn't say anything about Christmas. But it's in verse 3 that Paul offers another reminder. He offers some perspective. And at first glance, it's not a happy perspective. Look at what he says. He says, for we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. He's put his finger here on the pulse of the human condition. This list of things, foolish, disobedient, deceived, and ultimately enslaved, Look at the world around you. If you had to pick four words to describe the world around you, wouldn't this be it? Take the word foolishness there. My goodness. It manifests itself in so many ways from celebrity worship to, to, to naivete. And it, it just, you hear about the things that people believe and you say, what in the world is going on? Take the next that Paul talks about, disobedience. We live in a time characterized by disobedience and disrespect. Again, if you don't believe me, look at what's going on around you in our nation. Cities look like third world countries. We, we have an entire generation of young people that have built nothing that want to destroy everything. Which leads to Paul's next item that he mentions. It's the cousin to foolishness and it's deception. Deceived, oh my goodness, the world is so deceived as Paul talked about in Romans 1. They've exchanged the truth of God's word for a lie. But don't get so wrapped up here. Realize what the real point of this is. Don't get so wrapped up in the world's problems that you miss the point of what Paul is really saying here. Yes, it's true that these things apply to the world around us. But the rest of the verse is just as applicable as well. Paul says in the rest of verse 3 that again, we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and desires, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. He starts out by saying, for we too were once this way. But by virtue of him saying we too were once, it indicates that something changed. What happened? What changed everything? Look at verse 4 again in the beginning of verse 5. It says, But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us. Here's the question. What happened that changed everything? What happened is that Christmas happened. That's what. Christmas happened. Because it was at Christmas that God's love for mankind appeared, according to what Paul has written here to Titus. So if you want to know what Christmas is really all about, Christmas is all about God's love. He loved you enough to come to take on flesh, to make his dwelling among us, yes, but also to die for you. He loved you that much. Do you love him? 
Now, this is where the rubber meets the road for Christmas. It's not just about sentimentalism and stuff. Do you love him who came to love you? The love of God is with you if you are in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for your love, for your mercy, for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Please, for those of us that know you, help us to live lives of gratitude in light of your love and mercy. To serve you with faithfulness and to take heart in the fact that this life is not all there is, but that eternity awaits. If there are any that do not know you, help them also to realize that eternity awaits and that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life eternal. That no man comes to you except through him. Father, please work in our hearts. In the midst of all the scrambling and all the confusion about Christmas, help us to remember what Christmas is really all about. And we pray all of these things in Christ's name.